In today's video, we're going to talk all about primers. What is a primer, why you need a primer, the different types of primers, and give you some of my recommendations. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Monique Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. So, I have talked about primers before, and I pretty much said I just use moisturizers as my primer, um, and that is what I like to do on my normal to dry skin. But I have had enough questions over the last couple of years on people asking for recommendations for different primers and asking why I don't use them uh, or asking what I think about certain products. So in today's video, I decided to kind of cover everything that I can think of about primers. So what is a primer? Primer is just preparing your skin for makeup. So overall, when you finish putting a primer on your face, your skin should look really good before you even start the rest of your makeup. So if your skin is dry and it's looking dry and scaly, your primer isn't working. You need to get it to be nice and healthy and moisturized looking. If your skin is oily or oily in the T-zone and it's looking really greasy before you start your makeup, uh, then your primer is not doing the job because you want it to absorb a little bit of that oil unless you're really looking for that extra dewy look. So there are a couple types of primers. There's water-based primers and you still silicone-based primers. And the rule of thumb is if you're using a silicone-based foundation, you should use a silicone-based primer. And if you're using a water-based foundation, you want to use a water-based primer. I will honestly say I don't pay that much attention. Um, and most of my primer foundation combinations still seem to work. But the reason why you do want to try and match them, uh, because a silicone-based primer actually leaves a a layer of silicone over your face. Now on a silicone based primer, the first ingredient can be water. It often is water, but then the second or third ingredient is going to end with a cone in it or sil siloxane. I can't even remember. I will put the ending to the common silicone ingredients here on the screen so you know when you're looking at an ingredient list to see if it is a silicone based or a water based. So basically if you have that layer of silicone over your face and then you're putting a water-based foundation on top of it, it can actually break up and dissolve that silicone and potentially give you patchiness or foundations that kind of roll and don't really uh, set as well. Most of the foundations that I prefer on my skin with the more medium coverage are silicone-based foundations. A lot of the tinted serums, a lot of the lightweight foundations are more water-based, uh, but you can just go to either the Ulta or Sephora website uh, because then you can do a lot of the research and just type in the name of your foundation. Ulta has the drugstore brand. Sephora has more of the medium to high-end brands. And then just look at the ingredient list. It's really easy to find the ingredient list and see what the base is for your foundation and also for your primer. Now I did not look up all these primers whether or not they were water-based or silicone-based before I started. Here's my primer collection. So why use a primer? One, to hydrate your skin. Two, to fill in texture on your skin. Three, to make your makeup last longer. Fourth reason is just to overall provide a more even base before you start your makeup. So my favorite primers are the moisturizers, that I use and I apply before I start my foundation and they really haven't changed over the years. It's still the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, the Embryolisse, and uh, sometimes I'll use my e.l.f. Holy Hydration. Uh, another really popular one, I have not purchased a full jar, but I have a small one in this, oh yeah, I have my little small uh, sample. The Bobbi Brown um, Face Base, is also another holy grail moisturizing primer for a lot of people. Basically, if you have dry skin, you can apply the moisturizing primer a few minutes before you apply your foundation. You don't wanna put your primer on and then immediately put on your foundation because then it can just mix with your foundation and not really adhere to your skin. But you wanna apply your primer on, give it a chance to actually 
plump up your wrinkles and your fine lines. So then your makeup will go on smoother and look better all day. Now, I don't feel like moisturizing primers necessarily extend the wear of your makeup. I've really been loving setting sprays and I just did a setting spray video, I'll put it up here. I've really found the setting sprays have been the best step or additive step that you can do to make your makeup last longer. Prior to me discovering how wonderful setting sprays are, I used to just pick foundations that were all day. So uh, I had my favorite foundations that look great for just four to six hours without any sort of setting spray. And then I had my favorite all day wear foundations that stayed all day even without a setting spray. But those all day wear foundations really needed a good moisturizing base underneath because they could look drier on the skin or heavier on the skin and when you have a moisturizing primer it helps your foundation look more like skin and look more natural now besides um just a moisturizing primer uh, sometimes people want a little bit of glow to come through i still think of these as more moisturizing primers but they will put something underneath their foundation to give it a glow uh, i love the charlotte tilbury unisex healthy glow it is pretty pricey i've been using this four or five years, long before I had my YouTube channel. I have purchased probably seven or eight tubes over that time. I gift this uh, to friends. So this primer is just lightly um, tinted. They say it's kind of self-adjusting, so it looks gray when you start, but then it turns into a light tint. So if you have really fair skin, it might not work with your skin tone but it does provide a skin tone evening layer so that your foundation doesn't have to work so hard. So when I use this healthy glow, I can put on a lightweight or a lighter foundation or even a tinted serum on me and still have good coverage over all of my hyperpigmentation because I have a lot of hyperpigmentation. So a lot of primers and things that I use are geared more towards how they work on my normal to dry skin. Healthy Glow is wonderful. The Hollywood Flawless Filter is amazing also to give you a real glow underneath. Charlotte Tilbury's Wonder Glow is also an amazing primer, primer to apply underneath your foundation to give it a natural glow. So Charlotte Tilbury really does it right with products uh, that you can put underneath your more matte foundations or even mix them in with your more matte foundations to have a healthier glow. Lisa Eldridge also has a elevated glow product uh, and then there are some drugstore ones i will put them up here up uh, because i don't actually own any of them but i've heard good things uh, that they're dupes to wear underneath your foundation to kind of have that glow come through okay this next category of primers are pretty much the all-in-one primers so they might do a little bit of blurring they may provide a little bit of base against uh, the oil from shining through they may help your makeup last a little bit longer but they are just kind of the multi-purpose primer and i have quite a few of them uh, in my collection here so the first one which is one that i love it is the ysl touche clot blur primer yeah i really love this one it, so it has these little luminescent particles in it which help smooth the skin and then reflect the light and give you just this perfect beautiful finish underneath your makeup this one uh, is definitely moisturizing it does have um, different uh, oils in it. It's not an oil-free one, so it's really good for the drier skin. Okay, the next one is the Laura Geller Spackle Skin Perfecting Primer. Um, I use the moisturizing one because, again, my skin leans more towards the normal to dry. Uh, there are some other types of spackle, and you can get this at Macy's or at the Laura Geller website. I really love this um, hydrating one. It does give just a slightly dewier look, so it's really good under foundations that don't already add extra moisture or an extra dewy look. I'm really, really pretty. My makeup just feels really good all day. Then I love the NYX Marshmallow Primer. This one, it fills in the pores just a little bit. I feel like you can use this one even without any sort of makeup on top of it, and your skin just looks really, really pretty. Only thing I don't like is the fragrance on this one. It is one of those sweet fragrances, but it doesn't last very long. Uh, another kind of holy grail one for a lot of people, and I do use this one quite a bit, is the 
Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. This one also provides that beautiful, beautiful base. It is oil-free, uh, and I love that. Now, here's one that's holy grail for a lot of people. It's the Revlon Color Stay Primer and base. It does have an SPF 34. I don't feel like it's enough SPF to, you know, depend on this only as your SPF, but if you're layering it with your foundation, um, maybe the combination of both of them, and your foundation contains an SPF, the combination of both might be enough. But I find that when I have SPF built into my makeup, it usually is a dewier finish, and I don't know if I necessarily want a uh, an SPF foundation with an SPF primer underneath. I just feel like for me, even though my skin is normal to dry, occasionally around the nose area and right here, it can get kind of um, greasy. And usually those SPF foundations or moisturizing, uh, tinted moisturizers, tend to make it a little bit shiny. For me, this one is better under a regular finish foundation or a more mattifying foundation. But if you do have oilier skin or you are in a hot, humid environment, uh, you may want a more mattifying primer. So the holy grail for me, and this is the old packaging, is a Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. This one has been around for years. It is beautiful, glides on quick, absorbs quick, and then provides a perfect matte base. Smashbox also makes a lot of different primers for rosacea or hydrating. I mean, they have a whole collection of primers, so you can find one to meet your specific need. For me, I like the photo finish. Sometimes I'll just apply it over that nose area uh, when I just want to mattify things a little bit. The Maybelline 4-in-1 Protector Primer is gorgeous. I can wear this um, and not put anything else on over it. It is mattifying, but it is also tinted. So it's all very mousse-like going on. It is beautiful. And then if I put it under a lightweight foundation. It gives me that medium, lightweight to medium coverage that I love and that I need to cover up my hyperpigmentation. The Wet n Wild Impossible Primer is also mattifying. I think, I wonder if it's supposed to be a dupe for the Smashbox. Uh, it is silicone free. This is silicone based. So I feel like it is a, a different product, but it does mattify and hydrate at the same time. And then my other Holy Grail one is not here. I left it in Florida. But if you need a mattifying, oil-absorbing primer, the Benefit Pore Professional is another Holy Grail. It is tinted, so it does have that little light coverage, kind of like the Maybelline. It is beautifully mattifying, absorbing that extra oil, Again, that is something I use when I'm in a really humid environment and I will just apply it here. Some people have said with more mature skin that it gets really drying and uh, on the face. I do not need my cheek area, you know, to be dried out. So again, I, it's one that I just used on my T-zone and I left it in Florida because that's where I need that mattifying effect the most. I also get the question quite a bit on, you know, gripping primers or what's the best primer to make the makeup last all day like for a wedding or something like that. Uh, I have two Holy Grail products and they to me are almost the same except one is drugstore and one is higher end. Uh, they are dupes for each other. Uh, one is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer and the other is the Elf Power Grip Primer. So both of these when you apply them, it stays just a little bit tacky on your face. You really do feel like your makeup is gripping to it. And then when you combine it with a setting spray and setting powder, easy to get your makeup to last all day long, even in the most humid environments. So again, if you haven't watched my setting spray video, you can see how I layer the setting sprays also with makeup. And I think that combination is like the stay all day no matter what combination. But I do love these. The e.l.f. one, because it is so inexpensive, is the one that I really recommend to people the most, but they both work fantastic. So the last type of primer is that pore filling primer for those with uh, more noticeable texture. Now, these general primers, these mattifying primers, they also blur and smooth 
pores. But if you have really large pores or really need uh, something heavy duty over your texture, these products really are ride or die. Uh, first one is the Tatcha Silk Canvas. This is kind of like the, the bar. This one set the bar on pore filming primer putties. It goes on uh, really silky. It fills in those pores. It kind of dries down and then leaves a really smooth surface uh, for your foundation and additional coverage. These are the types of products that I don't necessarily put all over my face. So I will put them, if my pores are feeling a little large, I will put them just over those places that need that pore filling and then I usually just use my moisturizing primer uh, everywhere else. Or I will apply my moisturizing primer or another primer all over my face and then go back and do the extra coverage of right where I need it. I don't really like this all over my face. Same token, I have my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I feel like this is the same product, just a lot cheaper. You can see I really dug into this one. They also sent me their primer. I've used this one too because I just sometimes just grab a primer. And then they sent me their Acne Fighting Primer too, which of course I don't need to use because I don't have acne, but if you have oily skin, the Acne Fighting Putty Primer might be the right one for you. Then there are the couple of products that I use both under and on top of my makeup. And these I don't feel like are as long lasting, but these are ones that you can pop in your purse. And if you're seeing your pores are looking a little larger or you're looking a little shiny, these go great over makeup. And the first one is the Trini London Miracle Blur. I've talked about this before. This is like, oh gosh, I'm almost gone. I need to reorder. This is a thicker putty, almost like Play-Doh putty. I'll put it right over here. And it's one of those that immediately kind of mattifies and fills in those pores. Gosh, it's so pretty. Love it. A little bit pricey. It does come from um, England. I do love Trini London products. I have a lot of them. And then somebody suggested I try this. This is the Maybelline Master Blur Stick. And this works just as well, I feel. Just immediately mattifies also kind of smooths and fills in those pores. The finish, I feel, is a little whiter, if that makes any, any difference. Like, I feel like the Trini London is invisible, and I feel like this one has just a little surface shade to it. And also, surprisingly, even though it's Maybelline, I find this sometimes hard to find. It took me a long time. This was on my list of products to try for a long time before I actually saw it in the store. And that's it. Those are all of the primers that I am covering today. Of course, I know that's not all of them. Let me know your favorite primers down in the comments below. If you leave a little description as to why you love that primer and your skin type, that also makes it really helpful for other people watching this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.